Let me um let me introduce you the proper way though, man, uh, cuz you you know you definitely deserve that. Tonight's guest is a legendary and I mean le- we, you know a lot of people throw this word legend around, but it's it's apropos in this instance. Um legendary and at the same time as him being a legend, to me he's very underrated, which is which is crazy. I don't think this man gets his just due, but we're going to give him that tonight. He's responsible for producing for some of the Ellis you know, groups and crews of all time, illest artists from, you know, Camp Low to, you know, Talib to MERS to Currency. Um, I think there's some stuff from Mega, Smoke Dizza. But when you talk mm. about Uptown Saturday Night and you talk about Reasonable Doubt, this put this man in a legendary status. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can't tell. Those two albums are untouchable. You know what I'm saying? So listen, ladies and gentlemen, tonight in the Drop of Gem, season four premiere, the one and only Ski Beats. What's good, fam? What up, what up, man? What up, man? Chilling, fam. Right. Word up. Let's, um, Ski, let's jump in, man. I know you ain't got a, a lot of time, but uh, we got a lot to cover. So Greensboro, North Carolina. You know, I'm familiar with North Carolina. I'm from New York, but I've been down there a lot. Um, paint that picture growing up for us as a kid, you know, North Carolina, Greensboro. Wow, growing up as a kid in the CAC. Word. You know, man, running around in the streets playing football with my boys. Word. Uh, building tree houses. <laughs> you know, just doing what country kids do, man. <laughs> Hanging out in the park, playing in the creeks. You know, it was, um, you wouldn't even think you know, hip hop was even around, you know, during that time when mm-hmm. I was doing my thing, you know, Word. but, um, right. we definitely, well, uh, we definitely caught wind of hip hop, man. When, um, back in the, um, early eighties, bruh, like when, mm-hmm. you know, when groups like Run DMC and, and, and Marley Marr and all them was doing their thing, they kind of like hit us like a, like an epidemic, man. You know, I'm from a college town and there's this college called, a and T State University, <clears throat> and obviously, you know, a lot of kids from you know DC, from New York, from all over the world was going to that school. All right. So you know, we would go hang out on the campus, and um, you know, all the New York kids they would have you know Mr. Magic tapes, and we mm. would go there, you know, and you know buy tapes from them, and you know just sit up in their rooms and just listen to you know hip hop that you know we was definitely not getting in MC at the time. So you know, I was you know I was a student of the game, man early nice and how do we go so how do we go from um you know growing up in north carolina getting these tapes to to be starting your own introduction with the busy boys um you know like i say just being a um fan of hip-hop man i think what i think the bug hit me though really for me to start emceeing when i took a summer of trip with my uncle he was living in baltimore at the time mm. and he took me to the harbor Oh, and yeah. I just, and there was this kid, you know, he was, you know, he was rhyming, he was rapping. And I ain't even, you know, I never seen a person like physically rap in front of me ever in my life. You feel me? Uh, so he was on the, he was at the harbor rhyming. And I saw like how all the people, you know, was gravitating towards him. I saw how all the female was loving him. I just saw the attention he was getting. And I'm like, yo, I want to do that. I want to do that. So, you know, that I, after the summer vacation was over, when I went back home, to North Carolina, I just, you know, started writing. Just, you know, trying to be an MC. No doubt. No doubt. <clears throat> and eventually, you know, I, I got pretty good at it. Won a couple of talent shows and stuff. And then I hooked up with um, my uh, friend Eli. Mm. He was in this school called Weaver Center. And they had this electronic music class. And the, the teacher, his name was Mr. Fowlers. He would teach kids how to use, you know, mixing boards and, you know, drum, oh, wow. you know, the back in the day, like the old... Yamaha drum machines yeah. and four track recorders and things like that. Now, I wasn't in the class, but he would actually let me skip one of my, you know, classes in school to go over to Weaver Center and just sit in at the class. What's his name? What's his name? His name was Mr. Fallis. Mr. Shout out to Mr. Fallis. That was some G shit. Go ahead, my bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, but at the same time, um, when Eli took me to that class, that's where I met my uh, partner, Fanatic. And he he ultimately he ended up being the um, producer for the Busy Boys because mm. I was strictly rapping then, and he right. heard me rap. And he was like, "Yo, I got a group. You want to be in it? We got an MC that's already in it, but he doesn't want to rap anymore, and we're looking for a rapper. And I think you know you 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 you, you could fit." And so you know they threw me in the group, 
And once they did that, you know, it was over then. <laughs> it was over then, man, because I brought all my ideas, you know, plus Fanatic's ideas, and, you know, we put it together, man. Facts. We put it together. Um, Crazy. And you guys... Go ahead, bro. Nah, I'm just saying, so... I read, uh, nah, I didn't read. Actually, I was, I was listening to an interview you did with Ilman. Shout out to Ilman. It was a really dope interview. And I read that when these, you and the Busy Boys were um, opening up for a lot of like prominent acts that were coming down to North Carolina. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. You know, we had got to the point, man. You know, we had honed our skills to the point where we like eventually started, you know, putting out records. Mm. And the local radio station, they started supporting our music. And, you know, we became sort of like a big deal in North Carolina in the eighties. And so anytime, you know, the promoters would have like major acts coming, you know, pre- perform at coliseums or arenas, they will always call us to be the opening act. And so when they did that, you know, they just gave us like a chance to rub shoulders with, you know, people like, uh, um, uh, Biz Markie and, mm. and Dana Dane and who did, you know, everybody that came, you know what I'm saying? Right. We met them and, you know, we built relationships. Did that and, give you um, like a sense of, uh, you know, extra confidence, you know, and validation that you were, you know, able to like open up and rub, you know, did you make dude, you feel like you belonged at that point? My dude, definitely, bro. I remember performing, uh, opening up for Heavy D and the boys. Oh, and I, and, um, you know, backstage crazy. I ran to Heavy D and he was like, yo, dude, you don't understand this. Now this is how Heavy D's mouth. He took my record and wanted me to autograph the record for him. Wow. wow. So he did that. I'm like, dang, they, you know, they fucking can I curse? Absolutely. Yeah, of yeah, course. Absolutely. We encourage that. We encourage that. <laughs> I'm like, yo, they fucking with us. In New York, they fucking with us. You know, and that's so good because, you know, or... New York is like, around that time, that was it. Yeah. I mean, you know, if, if that was you, the you know, if you had people from New York loving you, you was good. Yeah, definitely. Right. So did you guys put out the, the album dropping it? Did you put it out independently or through a major? How did that whole thing work out? It's crazy because rumor has it, and that, no, it's not even a rumor, Kwame himself mm. told me. And Kwame mm. was signed to Atlantic Records. He said, dude, your whole demo, your your um, they had a, a test pressing and everything of the Busy Boys for Atlantic Records. But I don't know what happened. Something happened with the our manager, our label at the time, the deal didn't go through. But we never knew. But until you know, Kwame told us a story about how we was about to be signed to Atlantic. But we ended up putting our first album out on this um company called Yo Records and I think that was based out of um uh Houston, Texas or something like that. Oh, okay. 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 So-